It's lovely to see the bag violin coming together. The back is all studded, it's stable, it's in one piece. But there's one more job I need to do before I can glue it back onto the ribs. I've noticed that there are a couple of bits of purfling missing at the top and the bottom of the plate. Purfling is this lovely band around the edge of any stringed instrument. It's most commonly made of pear wood and you have a dark layer that's dyed dark and then a lighter layer and then a darker layer. And those are all glued together and it makes this decorative band. So I'm going to aim to replace the, the existing purfling that's missing with something that I've already got. This doesn't quite match what the bag violin is made out of. So I think that with a bit of judicious retouching, I can just make the black parts of my purfling a little bit wider once it's in and fitted. So the first thing I think to do is to use my specialist purfling pick, and this is a violin maker's tool that um, we use to fit purfling. We use it to cut the channel. I'm going to use that just to tidy up the channel and the ends of all the purfling here that's broken off. That's actually cutting the ragged ends very nicely. And I should be able to get those really square so that I can fit the new piece in with just a butt joint. I think I'll just have to butt the purfling up and then I can just uh, put filler varnish in it when I'm finished just to really disguise that joint and make it stable. So I should clear out the channel, cut the ends and then I'll have a go at fitting the new purfling. Okay, that's cleaned up quite nicely. So I've got a couple of bits of purfling here that I've cut to length. I'm hoping I won't need to bend them using my bending iron. I'm hoping that we'll just be able to bend them a little bit and get them in. Let's see. Yeah, that actually fits in there pretty well. I've already cut it to length to save a bit of time and that fits in there. It's standing proud at the moment. Um, so I shall scrape that down like we would when we were making a violin. So um, I'll scrape that down to match the existing surface. So that should fit nicely that side. I've cut my other piece of purfling here to fit. And I can bend that into position as well. Yeah, that's great. So we have the two new bits of purfling in position. Now I need to glue it. Okay, I think we're ready. I'll just take both of the pieces of purfling out. And then I'm just going to fill the channel with glue and then just using my very technical piece of kit, which is a bit of a, an old wooden clothes peg, I shall hammer very gently the new stuff in just to make sure that it really does fill the whole of that channel perfectly. And there we go purflings all glued in. I'll wait for it to dry and then I'll scrape it flat. The glue on the new purfling has now dried so I'm going to use my gouge just to take it down to the level of the rest of the purfling. I need to be very careful doing this not to touch the rest of the plate. So I've got just a nicely rounded gouge here, it's not too deep. So I should just be able to take off the bits of purfling that I need. the most of the wood gone. I'm now going to use my scraper just to scrape down that last little bit so I don't touch the varnish. Okay so that's the purfling in and glued. I'm not too worried that it looks so much newer than the old purfling at this stage. The main thing is that the wood is filled um, and the gaps are gone. What I will do when I come to do the extensive retouching on this violin is then I will um, fill it with varnish filler. I can retouch then and really blend it in. But for now, I think that's all I'm going to do on the back before I re-glue it to the rest of the instrument. 